Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Money in the Law, my <laughs> FM 101.3, with your host, Jay Marsden. He is from the Marsden Law Group, which yes, by, he is. Yeah, by the transitive property, we're going to call him a lawyer today yep, and, and, right. and for the rest of the day. I'm John Drawn, Main Effort Financial. I am not a lawyer, nope, uh, although nope. I, I stand next to one on TV, right, which is what I'm doing same, right now. Same, same thing. Same you are thing. Uh, listening and watching Money in the Law, listening to and watching Money in the Law on uh, my FM 101.3. You could be doing both. Uh, and Holliston Cable Access TV, the Holliston Hub, respectively. I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to this question. I wonder how many people watch the show on TV and listen to it like in real time. Like, you know the old Johnny Most move you know, when you watch the yeah, Celts no, and you're like, no, I don't no? know. Do you think anybody's doing that? Uh, well, I, I was just about to introduce our guy. Please do. Right? Our guy. So to, speaking sure of Holliston, that's a good question. Thought. Uh, Tom Harmon is here, of course. He is the House and Cable Access yeah, he is. Yeah, executive he is. producer of the show. So that's a question out, Tom. Do we? Does this show air at 11 a.m. on Saturday, like simulcast with the show? I do not believe so. I right, don't think so. so. That, so yeah. I think then, so then the answer to your I question is no. is no. All right. All right. Unless you would just have like a, you know, like Unless a, you're taping a it or... 48-hour delay. Yeah, maybe you're lot. <laughs> well, you could lie. You could get, jump Turn on the, the website. Up. You could down, you could download the show. And then try to match it up on each catch. There's a really complicated way to do it. Maybe. Which, yeah. Know. Which, we'll again, we'll talk which to Ray. Is, that's part of what I wanted to talk about today is why make things complicated. Uh, hey. But first things first, uh, Ray was just in here, and we're just uh, before the show started, and Ray's still here. He's in the he's in the soundproof room over there, so we can't hear us talking about him. But we we noticed he was in a particularly good mood. This is Ray Ozier, uh, yeah, who is the great the, Ray Ozier. Yeah, he is the yeah. voice of the my golden FM voice of 101.3. Yeah. So he was like particularly light on his feet this morning. He was particularly I don't know if it's the springtime. I don't know. It what might it be was. spring. It's like the first full day yeah, of spring yeah, today, the yeah. Wednesday, the twenty second. So the thing about Ray is, and and for those of you who I'm sure that you know, many of you probably only listen to one point point three for us on Saturday mornings, right. which is a which is the it's wrong crime. answer. It's, crime. it's, it's crime. the wrong answer. Yep. So here's why. Um, so again, we always we kind of talk about our you know our fearless leader Tom McAuliffe, but Tom McAuliffe has he has figured this out. Like oh, you yeah. know when when you think about when you think back and we're, you know we're gonna well, some story time here, right? So when you think back when we first started, which was now eleven years ago. Yeah, we're yeah we're yeah, north eleven of a decade, plus yeah. years ago, right? And there's a there's a post if you ever come up here, there's a post that has us a picture of us eleven. years years ago. I'm like, wow, two good looking guys. And I walk in and I see it. I'm like, wow, that's us. Yeah, really yeah, good at all. <laughs> yeah. So 11 years ago, this was a different show, right? Because remember, Tom took it over from his dad, right? Yeah, from, yeah. from Tom Sr. And, and, and it was, it was a different, it was an AM radio. It was, it was purely local, but it was, you know, the people listen to AM radio for a reason, right? Well, because and of their, their commitment to the community, the local footprint and yeah. everything they bring to the table. And then when Tom took this thing into the stratosphere, when, when, when my FM happened, right? And, and you time. remember, it was such a big, it was a huge thing. My FM happened, and all of a sudden, not only, I mean, they played music on AM radio, but you know, you don't, no one listens to AM radio for music. Yeah, seasons of the Sun. You catch that, it's scrackly, right? And, you, and it's yeah. something you feel like you're listening to an old beat up album, right? Yeah, yeah. Like a scratch album. But no, but so he takes it to the next level. And for the, my, what I'm getting to is that the, the guy who's been there this whole time is the guy right in that picture. I mean, Tom and Ray have been, yes. you know, they've been in cahoots on this since the beginning. And so when you when you turn on 101.3, and again, I know you turn it on on Saturday mornings to listen to this show, which is for all the right reasons. But when you turn it on any other time and any other day, you're probably going to hear at some point, you're going to hear Ray's voice. Yeah. Because oh, Ray yeah. is, he does all, I mean, a, a good number of the ads. And then, of course, he's on live in the, every morning right. from, I think he starts at 4, no, it's like 6 to 10, right? Sure, six yeah. To, yeah. 6 to 10 is his, uh, is his show. live show. So, yeah, Ray, and so Ray's, he's the guy. And he's, and he, for some reason, he is in a really, really good mood today. So I don't know. Wreck that. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's play around so we're gonna that. we're gonna leave it at that. Ray, great job. Keep up the good great work. Great job. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Stay light, brother. Yeah. Stay <laughs> light. Stay light. Yeah. Stay light. Stay golden, yeah, pony right. boy. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So uh, how are you doing? I'm, I mean, do you have anything to talk about? Anything to have? I mean, I, Tom. Tom and I walk, when I walked in, Tom says to me, "How was uh, how was St. Patty's Day down in uh, <laughs> down in Key West, Florida?" Yeah. And I said to him, "These were my words." I don't think I'll spend another St. Patrick's Day in Boston for the rest of my life. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. So yes. you you learn you you you've come to I, you've come of age. We we've I, you know again this this game plan of going down there for St. Patty's Day has been in the pipeline for quite Decades. some time. Quite yeah. some time. I mean, to the point that, and I may have said this on the show before, if I was not down in Key West for St. Patrick's Day, 
I would have been live streaming Key West back You've to been the watching. kitchen yeah, yeah. and try to get the vibe. Um, I would tell you, like most things, way better in person. Way, uh, yeah, way like, better in like person. Like pretty much all things. Yeah, right? yeah, the, yeah. We, we, yeah, we checked a ton of boxes down there. Um, both my daughters were down for the first time, so we get to kind of show them around a little yeah. bit. Uh-huh. Um, they, by all account, had a great time. Wait, that was their the first time in Key West? Yeah. Shut the front door. No, Whoa. no. You, you've been hiding that, you sandbagging <laughs> son of a gun, you. You've been yes. hiding that from your kids for all. I mean, 28 years as, we've been hiding that from them. I mean, for as long as I've known you. As long as yes. I've known you, you've been like, yeah, we go to kids. Yeah, and, and, for, and for some reason, why I, why I thought this, why I even implied that at one point, maybe your kids might have gone down with you, you know, nope. just to see it because it's sunny and it's Florida. Nope, nope. That was <laughs> their kids. first time. Have fun with Grandma. <laughs> Mom and Dad will be back in four days that's exactly that's what it insane. was insane a little quality time with nana and papa we'll be right back yep so right, we're uh, not going to the cape for the weekend no no we're going to yeah, florida yeah. i know it's cold florida. here you yeah. look pretty miserable we'll be back <laughs> make yep. sure you do your home i mean that's right. That, <laughs> right oh that is it so is uh revelation I, yeah. so I'm, all i could say is you know great time great time <laughs> We did a bunch of things. We did a bunch of things differently than we've done in the past. We kind of took well, a little bit of a slightly different approach. The kids were big. The kids were big. The bringing them was big. He was big. And it's funny because there are there you are. You got to keep your shirt on most of the time, right? right? Yeah, that's cause... right. That's right. It was not the temperature was a little bit down below where it would normally be, but there are there are people down there who apparently are better parents than we are who brought their younger children. Of course they did. And they looked miserable. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I like, we avoided yeah, that. I knew, we avoided I, that yeah, phase we, we we were doing. of the project. Um, but great time, uh, a lot of fun, went to a ton of great places. Uh, everybody's in a great mood for all the obvious reasons. And then the next reason, you know, which is down there for St. Patty's Day, and the weather was great. You're talking about it's flip-flops across the board and, uh, you know, some some sunset cruises and a ton of live music and some pool time and just, you know, we, we've, we've joked about this before, you know, that the window of being able to do that with your kids is not open for very long. Well, obviously, you know? it's, especially it's, when you're waiting this long. Especially when it's been closed for so long. <laughs> closed, closed, <laughs> and painted, locked. Painted shut. Painted <laughs> shut, I might yeah, add. Yeah, with um, a storm on the outside, the yep, shutters nailed. That's right, yeah. that's right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, we, like I said, they, they were, they, their spring breaks kind of lined up in a way that made it make sense. And uh, so they, they, That's good. they had a great time. So That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm glad that you guys expanded your, <laughs> expanded expanded your, your family. A yeah, right? Proud of the spring. <laughs> a little family time. A little family time. Proud of you. Yeah. And was, yeah. It's yeah. All, all fun. It's all good. It's all good. So um, I would highly, I would, if, it's, if it's been on your list, yeah. uh, you know, kids so or why is, kids. So, so why is St. Patrick's Day particularly so good down in Key West? What's the, I mean, I'm, you know, I go to New York City. I can go to Boston, I mean, I mean, go to Dublin, I mean, Ireland. I mean, well, I mean, why, why, why is any town better on St. Patrick's Day? I mean, you know, there's, there's a. You well, know. you said that there's an, or, there's an organization to it. It's not just like it's St. Patrick's Day, you know. No, I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, it's, they, they, uh, they're, like they, they, they're, 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 they're uniquely, event. they're, no, they're uniquely well positioned for a day like St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and, uh, and there's, you know, again, you're, if you like live music and you like uh, live Irish music, which I do, um, you know, that's the day that kind of the, the, the planets line up. And, uh, you know, you can't turn your head without getting smacked in the back of the head by an acoustic guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's that, there's that much going on. So, uh, and, you know, and it's not like, you know, it's, uh, and, and in some respects, it, because it's, because there's a lot of, you know, celebrating down there on a regular basis anyway, this just blends right into it. It's not like, you know, it's not like this is the only day to celebrate right. down there. This just kind of adds a... You know, yeah, they you know. take it to the, they turn it up. Yeah, a little and, bit. and yeah. then they have, you know, and they have, they have all kinds of things going on. Like there's a road race down there that raises money for different charities in the area. So if you want to take advantage of that, you know, you get up. Which and you, then, I'm sure you did. Oh, I yeah. banged it up. 22nd, 22nd 20 person in my age group, yeah. you know. So, um, you know. I finished in the top 30 in my age group, yeah. So, so you know, there's, there's, there's a lot going on. I only on, did the so. 10K. I didn't do the 20K. Yep. Yeah, so it's fun. But, you know, it's fun. But then, of course, you know, there's a lot of cruise ships that come in. And uh, and that gun goes off, and and those guys are like, yeah, all right, I get they, they're on the clock. I, I, yeah, that's exactly right. I get six hours to make the magic yeah. happen, so we're making it happen, and so um, that's always fun and exciting. And yeah, exciting. I imagine that the that like you said, and you said a couple times, like is the whole live music piece again because the weather supports yeah. it, right? And then and that and the fact that that's 
And right, if there's one thing that you miss that you, that we kind of missed during that whole COVID was the fact of that that ability, and 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 even like even kind of post COVID, even before like the the live music world, it's not as big as it used to be, right? No. It's not. It's not. And 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 you said it at the beginning of the show. Think of how many concerts that you've ever been to in your lifetime where. You know, you, you're like, ah, I'll go see those guys. You know, I'm like, you know, sure. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a, a fan. I, I know some of their songs. And then you go, and after you go, you're like, I'm all in. Like, I'm such a yeah. fan. And, and it could be somebody famous, could be some no-name person you've ever seen. But you see them play live, it's a totally different experience. I mean, my wife and I were walking up the street. I think it was Sunday night. It was our last night there. We were coming home on Monday. And we're walking up the street, and almost at this same exact time, we happened to walk by this establishment, and we heard a young woman just banging out tunes on the acoustic guitar sounded phenomenal but she had we happened to walk by she was starting a song or whatever and as soon as we heard it both of our heads at the same time like oh we haven't heard that yet right, right? Turn, like, Clyde. You know, yeah. that's right we haven't <laughs> heard that yet. let's make a so we make a beeline over there and then we're going to kind of support her and give a shout out but you know the talent is fantastic and it's what you just mentioned it's you know you when you're here in Boston, like right now everyone's fighting about when do we get to go outdoors again. Like, when do we get to put the tables and chairs out? Yep. The city of Boston's, you know, playing their game about how much they're going to charge people to do sidewalk seating and all this other stuff. That whole place is one big outdoor sidewalk seating. Yeah. So if, if you're into the nice weather and you like to go to, you know, that you want to go to a good restaurant and you want to sit outside and you want to do some people watching and you want to listen to music and you want to, and you want to do water sports, you want to be on the wall, you want to go fishing, you want to go sailing. Th there's no end to that stuff. And it's, you know, and the weather doesn't roll in and shut it all down for yeah. six months. And so, you know, yeah, it's, if, you're, uh, if you like if you like the opposite of cold. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. If you like, all you right. know, so uh, if, you're a ski, if you're a skier. Yeah. If that's your away. thing, you might not want to put yeah, it on your list. Yeah. Not not immediately. Not right, right, yeah, not right no, now. Not right yep. Now. Yep. Um, all right. So today's portion of the show brought to you by Key West and the <laughs> Chamber of Commerce at Key West. Key West, the Florida Keys, yeah. lower keys. That's right. Keys that's lower, right. Yeah, same same commercial you see on TV. That's right. <laughs> it's the same. Right. The same two guys you see on TV doing yep. the commercial. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, we're uh, we're going to talk about some some stuff today. Let's we're going to talk, talk about, about some something. Stuff. What do you what do you you, you got? I'm waiting for you. Uh, you get something. Go ahead. Yeah, you I, get something I, in your pocket. Go ahead. I, I mean, I, I don't. I don't. Well, maybe I do. You all know, right, sometimes. Fire away. Um, I, so I was thinking about uh, again as I was I'm, as I'm coming in. I'm thinking about the whole. You ever get the question of should I do a Roth IRA? Should I do a traditional IRA? Should I do a Roth 401k? Yeah. Should I convert my traditional IRA to a Roth IRA? And the, and the whole concept. And, and make no mistake about it. There's there's a there's there's an extraordinary value in the Roth IRA, and there's there's extraordinary value in the traditional IRA as well. That there are all the all these the retirement accounts that the way the government has, has it set up that you get these tax these particularly incredible tax benefits sure. by investing into these accounts in order to use later on down the road to augment your income for retirement. That's the so. I wanted to kind of go through, uh, particularly the whole idea of you know one versus the other, because sure. some people are like, it's a no-brainer, just do it, you know, invest in the Roth IRA because of the tax benefit, you know, down the road, and some people say, well, you absolutely should convert your Roth, like do you know Roth conversion, Roth conversion, and you know we've kind of mentioned this on the show, but I wanted to kind of come back and review just for clarity purpose yeah. purposes, so when people say, you know, because you know they'll listen to the show, they'll watch the show, and they'll say. And they'll be like, oh, that's so great. Ah, those guys are so funny. I forgot what they said. Right. You know? So right. this is just a, a, like a quick reminder of kind of the differences between the two, the value, the, you know, the upside and the downside of the two. And, you know, well, I mean, and like everything that we talk about on the show, this is a general overview, right? And then yeah. if you want more advice and guidance as it is specific to your situation, your best bet would be to reach out to either John's office or my office and have a much more detailed personal discussion around how these that's your definitely your best thing. Things bet. affect that's you. Your, that's, that's, that's your best thing. That's your right. best move. So we'll come back. We're going to talk about that. We're talking about some other funny stuff. Do we have to talk about? Oh yeah, one of the things we have to talk about on our list today is Bloody Marys. Oh, do yeah, tell. That's a, that's an okay. important thing. So we'll talk about Roth IRAs and Bloody Marys and conversions and hopefully how they, you're talking. Hopefully they, you're listening to this with the Bloody how Mary. How they all work together. All right, don't go away. We will be right back. Right back. And we're back. My FM 101.3 J Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, main for Financial. Tom. We're not at the Bloody Mary bar right now, but um, we're definitely thinking about it. I can tell you that. I mean, uh, as soon as you say it, right? Because it's Pavlovian, right? Oh you, my God, when you say it, it you're like, oh, wouldn't it be fun if I was someplace where I didn't have anything else to do except just laugh and sit around right, and so, drink a Bloody so Mary? So this summer, we have to do that. This summer, we get to talk to Ray 
about letting Why us do, we have a to do a show this remote because we'll do it down the cake. Let's. Oh. <laughs> yes. For those of you not watching this, you yes. have to see the look on his oh, face. Oh yes. For us that to set up with these idea. mics at a yep. table at a bar restaurant, we're not going to be able to do a live these. production. We're gonna have to buy our do own a live production. <laughs> yep. do a live production. I mean, that may it may stay down there. It may Tom, stay down there all Tom, summer. Tom sounds like. I wasn't aware of this as part of the job description when I signed on. That sounds okay. That that's sounds right. okay. Sounds like, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, we're going to yeah. be there for just two weeks. Yeah. So before the show, we'll, we'll before the, like eight shows, <laughs> eight shows in a row. Yeah. Yeah. So before the before we jumped on air, we were joking around. These guys would give me the business asking about how the how Key West was, and then that's how we got on the Bloody Mary conversation. And my Tom Tom or John said something like, "You have a couple of those even down there?" And I said, "Oh." <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's my gasoline. Is there yeah. another option? Is there another option? Right, so, <laughs> and you said you're not a huge fan. Well, I'm not. I I, I I like them. I drink them. And here's here's my background with the Bloody Mary. It's not the alcohol piece. It's the tomato juice. Bingo. We hear that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's the tomato juice. And for for the reason is that we, I grew up. You know, like well, you, your your taste changed when you're. But sure. I, as a little kid, there's a couple things. There's maybe like five things that I couldn't eat. One of them was tomato juice. Yeah. And my parents would. They had it all the it's time. It's a consistency I, thing as well. I don't know. I don't know if they were. I don't know if they were drinking Bloody Marys or not. But we always had a can. And remember, a came can of V8. In, no, it wasn't the little. Can. We had like the big, like the quart oh, can, right? We had big, that, yeah. and there was always in the refrigerator. It was always open. There was never covered right in it, right? <laughs> and, right. And, and and it would be in the way, and it would be in there for months. And you're like, ah, oh, you move this to me, and it was gross. And then and and every now and again, you try it, or I'd see my father drinking some, I see my mother drinking some, and, I'm, and they'd be like, oh, do you want some? And I'm like, no, it's like food in a yeah, glass, I and know, I don't I like. Know. It's a lot. Yeah, it's so, a lot coming at you. So 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 when we were talking about the, I I've, I I like the Bloody Mary, but I, I have to have a, like the acuto months with it. Oh, I have yeah. to have it's the gotta fixes. be loaded up yeah, yeah. Yep. just to kind of just to offset everything and right and then that makes it fun right so well and look there there is an art form to making those things <laughs> I mean you know you don't just like casually throw a little v8 in a glass and top it off with some Tito's <laughs> and, and call it a day you're right? kind I mean, of a, and you're you know. kind of a connoisseur and Dre was saying the same thing you're kind of like a, a connoisseur of this particular style of art <laughs> Not, well you know it's one of those you know I mean especially when you're like I said if you're out gallivanting around on vacation then you tear it up the night before there is no better way to transition oh. the next morning to uh, to, to that manage is, that a little bit now that's Hutch's hangover medicine right I, there I will say my favorite uh, my favorite bartender of all time my sister yeah. Sharon uh, <laughs> has a very specific rule which is you cannot get a bloody mary out of her after noontime yeah uh, it's a she's morning like, drink done. Yeah. she's like it's done yeah. you you roll in at 1 a.m. you want a bloody uh, 1 p.m. you want a bloody mary she will flat out say Absolutely tomorrow. not. Tomorrow. Come back else. tomorrow. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You're 22 you hours. Too, you're 22 hours too early. <laughs> and so, uh, so we and we've we've actually called her a couple of times to get a few rulings because there was some there was some gray area in some of the you know can, if we're already in mid round can we yeah. keep it going? Does it, is, is it can when I get you a, start? Can I can top I, it off? That's right. right <laughs> that's right. But you know, and she's, it's very specific. But uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I you know I think. Uh, I think it's a it's an all right way to start the day. It's an all right way to start the day, and we and you were met or Ray was we were talking about kind of like some of the some of the things that go. You know, usually like there's there's always like that stock of celery that pokes you in the. I mean, that, oh, yeah. that's kind of the basics. Yeah, right? that's, that's kind right. of the basic. That's like, yeah, thing. that's like but, base one. That's yeah, right. right. Well, Ray was talking about how he's had ones with chicken wings in them, right? Oh yeah. Bacon is another Piece favorite. Of pizza I've seen yeah. tacked on that <laughs> pizza. thing. It's usually something like a, if you go in now, like you go you go sea, seaside. There's like a lobster tail one. You know, they make the yeah. thing. It's a meal. I mean, it's yeah, it's a yeah. meal. That, you know? And that's fun. That's fun. So, so are we promoting that on the show? That's we, fine. Oh, you I, I will tell you right from now, from a breakfast standpoint. Well, again. I'll promote locally. I promote locally. Uh, Depot Street Tavern. Depot, not a sponsor. However, not we sponsor. love could be could be. Pretend. We, we love we the crew over there. We what? love the crew over yeah, there. Amanda, Liz, Juliet, yep. the whole crew. Um, they make a killer. Yeah. Bloody Mary. Yeah. yeah well, so. that's that brunch thing, right? And that's a great brunch. That's what, yep. that's what brings you there. There's there's food there too. There's food, and, <laughs> food, some TVs, food. some great personality, super vibe, and then oh yeah, that's right. There's that. So all right, all right. Uh, so let's talk Roth. So dovetail right right into the into Perfect the Roth. Segue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. So so the question is this. So so just a quick review: traditional versus Roth. Traditional IRA or traditional 401k. Your money goes in pre-tax, so you get to reduce your taxable income, right? Yep. If I so if I invest ten thousand dollars into a four hundred one k, or if I invest five thousand dollars into a traditional IRA, then what that means is my taxable income is now reduced by respectively ten or five thousand. Yeah, you make eighty five grand a year; they treat it like you made seventy five. Exactly. So yep. therefore, I pay taxes on on a, on a smaller number, which mean, which is a good thing, right? So I Who I, like less yep, taxes? I am paying yeah. I am paying less taxes in that taxable year now. 
the Roth IRA is different or the Roth 401k is different. That is, as we know, is after-tax money. So what that means is if I want to invest $5,000 into a Roth IRA, I need to first pay taxes on that money first. So it's going to cost me a little bit more money. I have to pay. So in order to get $5,000 to go into that yeah, Roth you IRA. you have to make eight grand, nine grand, I made ten grand. To, pick a number. Well, whatever, whatever my, again, it's going to depend on what my tax rate is, sure. my effective tax rate. So call it, let's say, maybe I, in order to invest $5,000 into Roth, let's say I have to, I have to, I have to put seven and I, I it's going to cost me $7,000 sure. because yeah. I'm going to pay $7,000. I'm going to get $7,000. I'm going to pay taxes on that $7,000. Yep. And then what's left over is that 5,000 and that 5,000 I put into the Roth. Game on. Okay. So the similarities between the two IRAs uh, and the two 401ks as God bless you. By Thank the way. you. Yeah. Is um, that anything that you put in there, any growth that you have in there, it grows tax deferred. Oh. Meaning, so yeah, and that's the that's why you do it, right? That's, that's the, that is the that's, magic. That yeah, is the that power is, compounding on yeah. steroids. Yeah, that's and that's that's why you do it because the 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 alternative is let's say you're investing, let's say you have a mutual fund, right? And you and every year you're you know you put money into this mutual fund, and this if this mutual fund grows and you make money in it, at the end of the year. Whatever you whatever you've made in it, if it's not inside a taxable account, you're going to pay taxes on it. You're yep. going to pay either short or long term capital gains tax, and that's going to eat away at your overall you know at your overall result. It's going to eat away at your overall you know your overall savings because you're paying taxes this year, right? So in the IRAs, both Roth and traditional, both of those you you're you're not paying taxes at the end. So any growth you have, it just keeps going. Like Jay said. It'll compound. It'll roll. It'll. It'll. You know. And if you if you have continuous success, which you may or may not, depends on what the market gives sure. you, what you're invested sure. in, and all that. But the idea is is that you're going to try and you're investing this in order to have growth over time, and the growth is going to be greater because you're avoiding paying that tax on your gains. Correct. Now, what happens next? Well, then you got to take money out. You got to take money out, right? Uncle Sam is great about letting you save money tax deferred, right? Yep. Don't become a charge of the public welfare rolls, blah, 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 blah. Oh, but by the way, we're not, we're not waiting forever. So there comes, there comes a time when, you, when, when it's time for you to take money, and, and you should take money out, right? Well, there's, 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 you get to determine when you want to take yeah. it out as long as you meet the guidelines and penalties and put all that stuff aside. You can take it out after 59 and a half, no penalty. But at some point, if you delay, 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 Uncle Sam's going to say, it's time. We've waited long enough. Yeah. That's basically the gist of it. Yeah. So, so the idea is, is that you're going to, the reason you're saving this money, again, all investments have a purpose. So the purpose of this investment is to, is to augment my retirement income. That's, what I'm, that's why I put money into a 401k. That's why I put money into an IRA, to a Roth or, or traditional. I'm saving money for retirement in the, in the event that when I retire, I'm going to use some of this money. Yeah. To, I mean, I'm going to use some of this money to augment because I'm not. I'm no longer going to work. I'm no longer going to work at my current job. Or maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But at any rate, I'm going to use this money to augment my income and do things and travel and pay for my kids. You know. You know. Help them with their. You know. Open bar at their wedding yeah, or whatever. Need, you're going to need money. Whatever. You're whatever. Need money. Whatever. You're whatever I'm spending you're gonna live my your life. Money you're gonna live right. your life. Right. So. When it comes time to, as Jay said, when it comes time to take this money out of these retirement accounts, or whether it's a traditional or Roth, you, when you take money, there's a taxation. There's a tax. Now, now the taxes come back, right? Because now it's like, am I? Do I have to pay taxes on it, or don't I? Right. So that's it depends upon what kind of account that you have. So. In the traditional 401k, in the traditional IRA, you've had tax deferred growth of all the money that you put in. Remember, and the money that you put in, you've never paid taxes Correct. on that you've money. Correct, you've paid no yeah. taxes. So there's, that, that money has never been taxed. So like Jay said, Uncle Sam is very interested in, in getting kind of what, what's due to him down, yep. you know, when it's time. Down to flesh time. So when I take money out of my traditional IRA, I, I'm going to, it's going to, all of it is going to be taxed as income. So if I take a thousand dollars out, it's as if I got a thousand dollar income. It's like a thousand dollar paycheck. It's going to be taxed at my tax rate, taxed as income. The alternative is in the Roth IRA, remember I've never paid, I've paid taxes on all the money I put in, but the money that has grown over time, that I've not paid taxes on that. And this is like kind of the cool thing about the Roth IRA is that when I take money out of my Roth IRA, no tax. No tax. No tax on the money. Obviously, because I've already paid money on the principal, what I put in, but there's no tax on my gains. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's pretty cool because, I mean, let's do the math, right? If I have a million dollar IRA and I want to start pulling out, I don't know, 80 grand a year to supplement my Social Security, if I'm in the regular traditional IRA, 
to get to 80, I got to take out, I don't know, 100? Yep. Right? But if I'm in the Roth and I want to take out 80, I got to take out... You take out 80, right? 80, and here you go. So, so when, when you're looking at it from that perspective, right? So if you said, okay, if I could snap my fingers... And, I'm, and if I could snap my fingers today, I'm going to retire, and I could pick what kind of account I yes. want to have, yep. then it's a, it's a no-brainer. I would want to have a Roth IRA. I, w I wish I had a Roth IRA. If I, if I had two accounts, one with, each with a million dollars, I would take the one that I don't have to pay any taxes on. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Because that, where, cause, where, cause where it's worth I, more. That's right. Where do I want my money to live? I want it to live. If I could, to your point, if I could just pick uh, right yeah. now, future Jay, future John, put all the money in my Roth IRA. Future Jay and future. That's a, I mean... We're probably going to look exactly the same, right? No changes, no changes <laughs> at all. Future Jay, no changes future at all. John, it's scary. So, 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 yeah, because and and that's the that's the important thing to understand is that if I have two accounts, one that's tax free and one that's not tax free, and they're they're equal in number, the one that's not tax free is worth more. It has more. Yes. It has absolutely, yes, it positively do. more value unless you, for whatever reason, lived in a place you didn't have to pay taxes, and there's no place like that on this planet, right? Yep. So. But here's the, here's the, so, so in that respect, it's like, oh, yeah, well, obviously I would want to do the Roth IRA. So sure. here's kind of where, the, where the, the, the question comes in because I'm like, well, if I can do a Roth, why wouldn't I just do that? Why wouldn't well, I just? Well, I mean, let's look at this way. A lot of us, let's say some of us older folks, um, had started down the traditional IRA path for a whole host of reasons because at the time, that may have been one of the only options available to there us. There was no Roth. The Roth may have been introduced <laughs> or new later yeah. in life, later in the <laughs> process, right? So, so for those who didn't have the who now didn't have the option right from Jump Street, do tell. So, if I do, if I don't have the option, then I'll, I'll, my only all I can do is I can do the traditional IRA, right? So that's what I have. So I'm, I have this tax deferred, and that's okay because I'm gonna, you know, down the road a million years from now, I'm gonna be able to I'm gonna take money out, but I'm gonna have to pay taxes on income. Then, once the Roth IRA came into being, then there was this the idea of well, I could change my traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, to a Roth IRA, which is called a Roth conversion, right? So this, and this is a very, very kind of, you know, kind of hot topic oh, nowadays. this is like super buzzword yeah, stuff. Yeah, so everybody, yeah. you know, so everybody and their brother is talking about, oh, did you do a Roth conversion to this? And, and you should do you know, a Roth we're conversion. Gonna talk, we're going to give you like, we're going to give you a little like kind of, you know, Roth conversion 101 and exactly what that what that entails. So remember, back to the back to my point of if I had a traditional and a Roth that were the same amount, right? That were the same or sure. or, or or similar amounts, the the Roth is going to be worth more because it's because it's I, I get it tax free. Correct. Now, the problem is is if I start investing, let's say I take you know a thousand dollars a month and I'm going to invest, or let's say a thousand dollars a month and I invest in a Roth 401k and a Roth tr or a traditional 401k. And I do that, and for 50 years, and 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 at the end, and so remember, all I have is a thousand dollars to invest. So in my Roth 401k, I'm not. It's a thousand dollars isn't going to go into that, right? Because right. I'm have to pay my taxes. So really, I'm investing a thousand dollars into my traditional, but let's say call it 750 dollars into my Roth. Sure. In 50 years, identical investments. Which one's going to be more? I mean, you got this. I mean, you got Roth. Roth? No. Ne ne next, ne uh, try the other. Try answer B. Traditional IRA. Yeah. So it's what I put more money into, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You got it. You know, how that works? See, because you used to work at that place. Why? Yeah. Why are we? Why? Why are we talking about this before? <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait. A minute. So, so I'll have more money, right? I'll have more. So if I look at my account balance, it says my traditional IRA. Let's say I have two million dollars. Whoa! Have I saved so much money? And let's say in my Roth 401k. I have one point five million dollars. You're like, wow, that's a that's a lot of money too, right? You know, but but at first but, glance, traditional yeah. IRA guy wins. Yeah, Better, so so I, so I look at it right, and I, and I say, okay, the traditional IRA versus the Roth IRA, but my traditional has more money. But remember, when I take money out of my traditional IRA, I got to pay taxes on it. When I take money out of my Roth IRA, I don't have to pay taxes. So this is where it gets tricky. And we're gonna get come back to the Roth conversion, but this is where you say, okay, which one's better? Like which which one should I do, and or, or or on paper which one looks better? And you could say, well, you know, like we said, the the everybody feels like Roth, 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 Roth. And don't get me wrong, I love Roth IRAs. I'd love sure. to have one. But if I have a traditional IRA that has two million dollars and a Roth IRA that has one point five million dollars, 
depending upon what my taxable income is, depending yep. upon what I'm, how much I'm paying in taxes. And this is where things, re this is where it's important to really look at it. Well, this is where I just gonna say, this is where the conversation with somebody who knows what they're yeah. talking about has real value because you, 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 you don't wanna be distracted by the noise and the chatter of people around you who are in completely different situations for a whole host of reasons. Yeah, and, and, and the whole, and especially, and you probably see this kind of with this, with the baby boomer generation, it's all about, everybody always like gets stuck on taxes, like, oh, taxes, this, oh, I'm gonna pay less taxes. About I bought yeah. all these annuities because I, it's tax deferred, and I'm in tax, yeah. this, and tax. I don't wanna, I, I really wanna pay less taxes. Right. Don't get me wrong, nobody likes paying more taxes than they have to. No. No, but, but a lot of people don't understand, they don't understand understand taxes and and particularly when you kind of get a lot of these sales guys that kind well, of they come let in, that tax issue drive every aspect the of their decision right yeah. that's the phrase you hear all the time right and sometimes you say to yourself step back let's let's see if we even have a problem here first yeah let's talk about let's 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 talk about exact let's figure out exactly what taxes you're going to pay right. like how much it's going to cost for you right again with all your other costs in retirement like your medicare costs and you know what your your if you have insurance or anything like that anything that you that you know your cost of living but the idea of of if i'm just going to base everything based on i just have to get my taxes so lower or so much lower or i have to you know i'm so worried about paying extra taxes at the end of the day, your tax your tax burden may not be as bad as you think. No. Yeah, and if your tax and, and and what I you know what I'm alluding to is the idea of your tax rate versus your effective tax. Well, rate. Well, you, you beat me to it, right? I mean, that, that that's this is where you have a conversation with your CPA that says before I start belly aching about all the tax issues that I think I might have because I'm listening to my buddy talk about his situation. Is that like do I have that problem? And then your tax person very might very well might lately say no, yeah. no. Your effect to your point, your effective rate is this. Yeah, that's what you're actually paying. Yeah, so so you may you you may be taking a, a hundred thousand dollars in income, but based on whatever deductions, whatever your particular situation right. is, you may not be your 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 tax rate isn't like thirty five percent. Your your tax rate could be your effective tax rate could be twenty percent. It could even be less. Yeah. So that's what that's what when it all what the effective tax rate is 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 after you you calculate all your deductions, what exactly your total the total ta the percentage of your income of what you're what you're paying in taxes. So. I come back to my 1.5 versus $2 million account. If my effective tax rate isn't as bad, and again, without ca like kind of doing the numbers well, on this, go ahead, yeah. without doing the numbers, I may say, wow, so if I'm, if I, even after taxes, even after I take, after I take the taxes out of my traditional IRA, I, I'm still going to have more money, right? And that's the other thing. I'm not going to take $2 million out of my traditional IRA in one fell swoop. No. Am I? I mean, no. unless I'm insane, right? But, but and I'm not going to take, just like I'm not going to do the same thing with the Roth. When you take money out of a retirement account, most of the time, most of our, our the way we coach it is that people, you take a, a, as much as you need. You take right. it as part of your income. So I'm not paying. Or you might be old enough where you're taking out an amount of money that you don't have any control that you don't even over the to. amount of money. Yeah. Uncle Sam is going to say, look, you're going to take 5% of that account this year. Yeah. There's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. you got to take it. You do what you want with it. Yeah. You, yeah, you don't have to spend it, but you've right. got to take it out of this account. And more importantly, you have to pay the taxes. That's right. It. That's right. That's right. All right. So so we're, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to swing back on this and talk about... Uh, so so my point is, is that you may... They, Understanding like what your your particular situation yeah. is, and having an un, and having a con a, a really good concept of understanding of like kind of you know what if I if I don't put money if I if I if I don't put money into a traditional IRA versus a Roth or or vice versa what is what is going to be the what could be the potential end game or end state of that and is it and am I am I kind of cutting off my you know my nose to spite my face now right. in order to just again to have like taxes wag the dog well in this road. aspect of the planning is one of those areas where it really helps to sort of sharpen the pencil dive in and say what am I really set myself up for here? Yeah. Before don't don't vague generalizations don't do you any favors in this part of the planning. Let's no, it do not. It they do no, not. it don't. No, it don't. All right, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll uh, get back into this, and we'll talk about um, other favorite breakfast drinks. Like, is there another one? Mimosa. Your, maybe. Your, your mimosa, like that, right? Whatever, yeah. You know. Yeah, the frozen mudslide, but that's uh, just straight. <laughs> that's whisk, more of lunch. Straight that's, whiskey. That's <laughs> <laughs> 
straight, 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 straight whiskey. Great at, great at every meal. Straight, straight whiskey with a small glass of ice next to it, just to cool your hand off. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll address that. Right, we'll be back. We'll be right back. And you're back, my FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group, John Drohan, Main Effort Financial. Tom sitting here working the blender behind us. That's what you said. That sound that you hear, that's what that is. Where Tom and I just chit chat, and all of a sudden he's talking frozen <laughs> mudslides over there. So no, it's just now a we know. Stack now we know what to get him as he's rolling off the course with his two over par day for himself. Right. Yep. Yeah. His yep. off day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So ah. Now we know what. Now we know what's. I'm going to order him the clubhouse. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Frozen. Well, yep. I mean, you may. I mean, do do people still do frozen mudslides? That that that's not as common a drink as it used to be. No, but you know, I will say, you know, I, you I mean, know. I'll, I'll I'll keep ice cream with me if I need. Yeah, to. yeah. No, you know what? I saw a fair amount of of, uh, of uh, things getting made. Uh, everybody seems to want the mojito. I'm, oh, know, I'm not a mojito. Really? Guy, I, I I tell you, man, I saw more muddling with going the mud. I was going to say, you got a muddling right? going on down there. Work. I said, yeah. oh, you know, some work to it. And then my always, my, then my heart always goes out to the, you know, when they get the 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 the. The the, wait, the waitress, the bartenders, putting their heart and soul into the mudslide, and then they get shut down when it comes to the tip. And somebody's like, "Oh, I tell you, go here's a whatever, some cheesy tip." And yeah. it's like, "Come on, you you ask for one of the most like yep. hands on, like right. gonna throw out a shoulder making this thing for you, you know?" And then it's just, you know, "Oh, here you go, here's, yeah. here's, here's you a go. dollar." You're like, oh, "Keep it, come yeah. on, yeah. keep the change, keep the change." Yeah, yeah that's right, change yeah. going in the saddest sure. sound ever, change right. going into a you know into right. a tip. You know bucket. the bar, right? Yep. Like they give you a twenty, the bartender gives you like all ones, right? Oh yeah, back. for yeah. a reason. Yeah, that's for right. a reason. Yeah, so gives you the option. Yeah, you don't deliver. You get fives back. <laughs> yep. You don't deliver. Yeah. You just you just let it go. Uh, and it's, oh man. Oh man. Someone's getting. <laughs> don't ask yeah. for a second. Don't, oh no. Don't ask. For, oh, I gotta make this one in the back. <laughs> you beat yeah. me to it. I'm just gonna say I gotta yeah, make this one up. I'm it. out of an ingredient. I'll be right back. Yeah. I had an ingredient. Yeah. It's something I just threw in the trash. Yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. I mean, right? You get what that's you get, right? There's a little bacon you fat in your mojito. How's that good? Yeah. It's, like a it's different, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. The glasses are different. Yeah. yeah it's using a different it's detergent. It's hot weather. Yeah. Yep. You'll enjoy it. Rum is different down here. <laughs> Rum tastes different on this side of the island. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, uh, so we're converting IRAs down here. We're, we're converting we're, Roths. We're converting yeah, let's traditional talk, let's IRAs. Let's talk about the conversion. Let's talk uh, about the, the conversion. conversion uh. right? Because that's, that's kind of the, you know, it's not a new thing, but it's a relatively new thing because of the rule change, right? So the rule change, remember back in the day, you're allowed to, you're only allowed to contribute uh, a certain amount of money to a Roth IRA, or yep. to a tr or in, in this case, a Roth IRA. So what we're talking about is when someone wants to change their traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, it's called a Roth conversion. So, so guys like me and you, right? We didn't we didn't get we didn't get in on the Roth bandwagon because we've been around so long. For whatever it was, reason, it right? wasn't there when we started, and we just kind of stayed on the traditional path. Yeah, or that. we or we didn't we didn't have the opportunity to, yeah, or whatever, because right. there's there some other moving parts to it, or because there was a because there was this this rule that was that has since been changed. But the rule was that you couldn't well, you couldn't go over what the, the contribu contribution amount was limit for that year, right? right? And they restricted, like, they restricted your, your income, whether or not you even qualified for it and things like that. So there were all those issues around so, so if I So my point is that if I have, say, $10,000 in a traditional IRA, and this is back, uh, and I, I forget the, at the date, the year that it changed, but before said year, let's call it 2007 whatever. or 17 whatever. or whatever. So before that year, I could only convert five thousand dollars of my Roth IRA right. in, of my traditional IRA into a Roth IRA, and like Jay said, I had to I had to meet the income requirements. I couldn't yep. just I couldn't just do it because if I was if I was if I made over a certain income, yeah, you whether a good year, whatever your job, yeah, right, yeah. and then then I, then I income out and I'm not able to to convert. So there was there was like a lot of limitations on this Roth uh, this traditional versus Roth IRA conversion. And then Uncle Sam said, and again, it wasn't Uncle Sam; it was one of the guys that works in the account or the girls that works in the account. Department and they're just, and they're they're the they're the numbers they're the people who love the numbers. We're leaving money yeah. on the table. And they're like basically the conversation. They're like, when do you want to get this? Like right again, it's like the whole like you know, bird in the hand is better yeah. than two in the bush. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you want to get some of this like this this tax money that's coming to you now? Yeah. We versus can, we can wait. On? We can wait. You we can, can wait, wait until yeah. we're both not here. Yeah. Or do you want to get some of it now? And. And here's what we do, and here's how we kind of spruce this thing up. Because, and they've done the math, right? They like, okay, they oh, know yeah. how many people. They, you know, there's there's projections on how many people Some are going to do it. Right. They, 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 they 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 moving, actuary, they actuary beads around on a board, exactly. absolutely figuring it all out. Exactly. Yeah. So they figured out. Look, if we allow, if we put a little more like a leniency on this ability to convert, if we incentivize rocks, folks. 
right? Yep. So, so what they did is they first thing they did is they removed the the limit. They removed that that your 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 conversion from a traditional to Roth. It, it doesn't apply to like that the the contribution limit for that year. So that's all. So you can convert as much as you want. Convert if you have hundred thousand dollars in a traditional IRA, then you can convert that to a Roth, right? Yep. And no, no limit. And the other thing they did is they excuse the income requirements, like your income stipulation. Doesn't so, matter. So it doesn't matter. So you can make a million dollars a year. You have a traditional IRA. Convert Guess this, what? Baby. You can convert that to a Roth IRA. Yep. How cool is that, right? And people are like, why wouldn't I do this? What is the downside? So, uh, as we well, said, uh, as we said, the, the the Roth IRA, on you know, when you're going to take money out of it, it's all tax free. It's great stuff. But in order to do this conversion, what you're doing is you are essentially saying whatever I'm converting, that is, I'm adding that to my income that I'm making for that year. You are going to prepay. Yeah, you're going to prepay the taxes. So I owe taxes to the government. Yep, I'm going to for the for the, for the option of converting this to a it's Roth not a, It's not a prepay, I'm paying the, taxes. Paying the taxes. I, yeah. I, I owe those taxes this year. So so back to our example, if I'm converting a $100,000 traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, it's as if, let's say I made $100,000 in my salary, right. it's as if I made another $100,000. So instead of making 100, I made 200 this year. And what yeah. does that do? That changes my tax bracket, right? So I'm gonna Correct. pay more taxes, I'm gonna pay, a portion of my income is gonna be taxed at a higher rate. And remember, it's a traditional IRA. So every Everything is counted as income. Yep. So I'm going to take that, and it's like I and now I owe that tax. But here's the part. Here's the part that people forget. And we've talked about this on the show before. So they think, okay, well, not a big deal. Not a big deal. I'm 40 years old. I'm, I'm doing this now. This yep. is pretty cool. I'm going to just take the money out of my. I'm going to take the, the money that I owe in the tax out of the traditional IRA. <sighs> right. Why can't I do that? <sighs> Because it's going to be considered an early withdrawal from the exactly. IRA, exactly. so you're just piling on. It's like, it's like fees on top of fees on top of fees, like baggage fees, change fees. It's like traveling these days. Here's the important thing. Here's what Jay's talking about. The when you convert a traditional to a Roth IRA, you owe the tax. If you take the tax money out of that money that you just converted, and you're, you're under age 59 and a half, right? You're paying a 10% penalty on what you took out. And that's more taxable income to you. Yeah. 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 So, so now you have, so now it's costing you an extra 10%, right? It's in, in 100,000, it's costing you $10,000 yeah. in order to do this on top of the tax that you already owe Correct. As, as part of, because none of it has ever been taxed. So what can people do? Do, do I have to use- Well, just, just like, that's the, that is the $64,000 question that, that we find ourselves asking all the time, which is, okay, I get that you're hot to trot about this Roth conversion thing. First question, before I even do the map, before I even get out my green eye thing, wh how much money green eye how, thing. how much money do we have to pay the taxes? Do you have can you write a check to pay the tax on the conversion or is it coming out of these assets? Yeah, because well, but, but that you ask the question, you're like, well, wait a minute. If you're converting it and you're gonna and you're gonna pay the tax and the 10% penalty, yeah. you could be paying upwards of a 40% tax. Correct. First thing I'll say to you is, it's not worth it. Right. It's not worth it to do that. Right. I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna spend forty thousand dollars in order to put sixty into a Roth IRA. I'll leave the forty thousand dollars there in that traditional IRA. Remember, everything grows everything tax deferred. Tax, yep, that's everything right. grows tax deferred. Right. So you know what? If I have like a hundred thousand dollars or you you know, a million dollars in a Roth and two million in a traditional down the road, I'm good. Right. I'm okay with that, right? So the idea is if it's going to cost you, like a, if it's going to cost you an inordinate amount, you're going to pay extra taxes. We'll always, like Jay said, don't pay the tax from the money you're converting. Right. That money's got to come from somewhere else. Yeah. So guess what? It's money that you have to that you and 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 this is where this is where the planning piece comes because it could be a very very good financial move for you. It could work. It could Absolutely be, could work. because it you be, may yes. have because you may have the capability to do it. You may have the money like non-taxable money that's outside, like sitting in a bank account or a brokerage account, and you have the ability to pay the tax. And then when you do the math on it, you say, okay, yeah, now I'm going to have in my in my Roth IRA in my traditional IRA, like my traditional IRA is a hundred, and now I convert to a Roth. I don't take any taxes out of that, right. so I got $100,000 in a Roth now, and now that's growing tax deferred. Yep. Now, granted, it cost me money that was outside of the account in order to, to alleviate the tax bill, 
But if I have the money and it works and it's part of like, it, and it's all part of like the master well, and, plan. And, and there may be a whole host of reasons why you do that. I mean, you know, one of the reasons you, one of the reasons people might do that is they might say, look, you know what? I'm on the bubble for an estate tax bill, right? Yep. And I want to, I want I need to get some money out of my estate. And you know what? Maybe I'll Roth pot in my retirement account and then I'll use the money to pay the taxes and that helps get my estate down. And then I get to pass more money onto my kids. And that may make sense. There's, there, there there's a be, lot of great reasons. That's to right. Do it. That's right. There's reasons that that might make sense. There's a lot of great reasons to do it. And, and, but I guess our point is that it's not just like a no, it's not like a, a no-brainer, like absolutely do it. Right. Because some people are like, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, no, no, without question, do it because you're going to pay less taxes, because you're going to be in a lower, you know, well, tax there's bracket. A, or, but there's a bigger conversation that says, well, are you, I mean, how, depending on how much your, your, your tax bill is, do you want to give out that much liquidity? Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't, you don't want to turn around and say, geez, you know, I get three or four hundred grand in my taxable brokerage account. And then I get this Roth IRA that uh, this traditional IRA that's really I'm, I'm hearing from all these people chirping away over here that this should, that this thing should be a Roth IRA. And I got to make it a Roth IRA. So I want to give up all my liquidity, all my taxable liquidity to put all my money into an IRA that now if I ever needed to get at the money, I can't get at the money. Well, and then what's the other Roth IRA rule? the five year rule, remember? Yeah. So if you're, let's say you're kind of getting close to the end, right? You're getting close, kind of starting to paint that retirement picture. Oh, yeah. And you say, okay, yeah, I talked to somebody, I got the cash to do it. If I convert this traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, let's say I have a million dollar traditional or 401k or whatever, and I'm gonna convert it to a Roth, I got the money to pay the taxes, I'm gonna do it, it's all gonna work out. And then next year, I'm gonna start taking money out of this Roth or potentially, <laughs> I can't do it no. because there's a five year, Tom, you writing this down? Five years, brother. Five years you got to wait before you You thought I was the only one that talked about five year look back periods? No, they're all they're, over the place. They're five, everywhere. They're they're everywhere. everywhere. Five, they're just fives all over the place. And this five is particularly important because you might you might do this, get your Roth IRA and you're just bragging to your buddies down at the pool. Guess what? You got four and a half years before you can take money out of this without paying a penalty. Yeah, you won't see those guys next year because guess what? The money that you're going to use to rent the condo <laughs> next year, you didn't come back and hang around with them. You just you gave away to pay all the taxes, you paid your taxes and you can't get out of the Roth IRA. So you tell your buddies, I'll see you in four and a half years, yeah. right? And at that stage, I'm sure we we'll all game, look good. Yeah. At that stage of the game, four and a half years is a long, long time, time down there. It's a long time down there. Yeah, it you is. Know, your card circle might be smaller. Okay, <laughs> so you know you got to think right. that through a little yeah, bit. The games may end a little sooner That's if you know right. what I mean. Right. Yeah. Happy half hour now. You've moved on. You've moved on, right? Got to figure that stuff out. That's what happens. So again, the, the the point of this whole discussion is is that there there are there are plenty of good reasons to do to, to do this. There are plenty sure. of good reasons to invest in Roth. And 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 don't get us wrong. I mean, I will always. I mean, one of one of kind of the and again, I don't want to generalize so much, no, but no. the whole idea of like, should I do traditional versus Roth, whether it be in a 401k or whether it be in an IRA, it, it a lot of what drives that is what I'm what I'm earning right now, like yeah. what my income is right now, what my taxable income is right now, because uh, oftentimes, especially if it's some people like, you know, if you make pretty good money. You're at this, and you're in this place where you don't have a lot of, you know, you know, you, you're you're the the standard deduction, but you only have, and you don't have other things that really can, right, can right. you know, you're you may be paying a good amount of money in taxes. So, the only other way to kind of alleviate that this year tax bill, because you have the capability to invest, is you may be able to invest into a retirement account. We're yeah. always gonna, well, you know, if if you can do it, right? We always, you know, we always, to, if you can afford to invest in a retirement account, you do it. Oh, like, all roads, you, all roads, baby, you all do roads. It. Yeah. So, yeah. so if I, and, and, and it may be that if I can put money, if I, let's say I'm over the age of 50 and I can put $30,000 into, into a 401k, then that's, and, and if I leave, and if my tax, if my tax bracket is relatively high and I can drop my taxable income by $30,000, that could be significant, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is this is where it's it, this is less of a just set it and forget it approach to I yeah. mean, this is a, this is like a little bit more surgical. This is saying you know what are we going to do? What's the right way to do it? Maybe it's not Roth all of it. Maybe it's Roth some of it. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, this this this. I like it when you when you liken us to surgeons. Yeah, well, right. right. I, I, I am a doctor of laws. We've talked about this in the show before. I mean, of course, it's the yeah. JD. Come on, come on. You know? That's right. I, you know what? I'm, I might just refer to you as doctor for the rest of the. Well, we should. The, I don't know why it hasn't. Rest, I don't know why it hasn't caught on yet. I don't know why it hasn't caught on. Ask your wife why. It hasn't I don't know caught why it hasn't. Caught yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, speaking of doctor, right? So usually we like to end the show with a good movie review. So, you know, we, we're we're in this new. So so the girls were home for a spring break. We didn't go anywhere, so we ended up we're staying home and sure. Yeah, we're doing some home. So our my 
my new thing now with my with my now young adult children is we watch inappropriate R-rated movies, like the funniest movies ever. We talk right, about. You could watch when they were little. Yeah, yeah right. So I, right. <laughs> we just finished the Hangover trilogy. <laughs> oh, good lord! So funny. We talked about this on the show last that's week. Right, yeah, we just we just finished the trilogy of it. So yeah, so oh, the, that's right. the uh, yeah, so that's right up there with all great trilogies. But, you know? <laughs> Star Wars, I don't Rocky, under, I, I mean, Star Wars, Rocky, yeah. Lord yeah. of the Rings, yeah, right, yeah. All right up there, yeah. all Harry Potter, all of them, yes, and The Hangover, yep, so, all of them, all yeah. of them. So I forgot what my point was about that, but I don't think you had one. You just, just, I think you're just looking to show what a better parent you were than I am. <laughs> That's not true. That's not <laughs> why. Because my kid says, well, "Let's watch The Hangover." I'm like, and my "Yeah, sure, says, okay, yeah, why not? Hold on, yeah. let's." That's right. Let's. Who wants a mudslide? Yeah. Frozen mud that's for everybody. Yeah, yep. everybody. That's right. Frozen that's right. Get them wander out. Gonna watch the movies. With mom and dad. Right, right. So I, I can remember way, way back in the day when we first, when my wife and I first had Rose and Mudsides. It was like, oh my god, this is like the greatest thing ever, like the most delicious. That, and then of course the other traditional, famous, most like back then, like back in the day, like frozen drink. The pina colada. Oh, remember the pina? And yes. Then do, do people still do people still order? I see a lot of those out there. I don't they think always, they do, we, right? They always have some version of that. They always have some knockoff. There's always something, a fruity something. Yeah, around. That's, uh, but that's it, like anything that's warm and tropical. They're always sliding one of those around. You know what there, the too. pina colada is? The pina colada is like a glass of soda, like a glass of Fanta or something, right? You know, it's like it's like so much sugar <laughs> in it, or in the like back of the sugar. fridge too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I can barely taste the alcohol in this. Yeah, that's the plan, man. Because it's sugar. Yeah, yeah. And somewhere along the line, sugar wasn't as good for you as it was back. Then, now it's yeah. great for you. I'm sure. Now it makes you feel really good. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. That's it. That's it. Time All to right. go. Yeah, we're right. time to, time so to we, jump. So we learned we're, a lot today. We learned about Roth conversion. We learned about traditional. Tom learned about, you know, the Bloody Mary and his, He was you know, online. Yeah. Robin, Robin Hood it up over next there. Time, I think doing. next yeah. time, what, what, next week is, ooh, next week yeah, is next get, week. Yeah, we're getting next close. Week, right, we, may have to, we may have to bring the blender next week. All right? We may have to. We may have to. So until next time, make sure that you save your money and stay within the limits of the law. I'm John Joy. This is Jay Marsden. We'll see everybody next time. Have a great week, everybody. Take care.